Welcome back guys, we're back with another tutorial. This time we're going to be going over how you can add Geyser and Floodgate to your server to make it cross-platform so you're able to join with both Bedrock and Java. This is going to be for the latest version 117.1 or 117.11 for Bedrock. However, it will also work going forward with the future updates. So a few things that are required with this, of course, is going to be a Minecraft server. If you haven't got one already, head over to seekerhost.co. You're going to be able to get yourself a server, whether it be small or large, and just pick the package that's perfect for you and how many players that you want on. Second thing that we're going to need is a geyser plugin and also the floodgate. We'll go through that and how you're able to get that from the website. Last but not least, we're going to be using FileZilla for this. Um, you might be able to do this for your FTP file access. It just depends how large the files are. Um, so I tend to recommend using FileZilla for this again absolutely free and I'll leave the download link in the description if you want to go grab it It's just a much easier way of being able to move server files over delete them or edit them So to get started, we're going to be doing this on a default server So this is going to be pretty much how you're going to start on here if you do start with a brand new server Of course, you can still follow the steps if you haven't got it on default You can just change it and follow along We're going to be deleting the server files first just to make sure that we start with a nice fresh server with the correct jar So with that, let's get into it Now two things that you're gonna need, like we said, is the Geyser plugin and also the Floodgate plugin. Now, if you're on Bedrock and you're thinking, oh, I don't know all about this, this does still work. You can do this just having a Bedrock account. All that we're gonna be doing is using a Java server as a shell um, to host both Bedrock and Java. So in fact, if you are just a Bedrock user, you can still go ahead, follow along with this. You don't need a Java account whatsoever and you can still create a cross-platform server. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to Geyser on the main page. I'll leave the links in the description. I'm gonna head up to download so let's click to download and it's going to take us to the master page for geyser so next up you're going to look for the geyser and we're going to go for geyser spigot now i just want to say this will work and it does have bungee cord and sponge etc however i find it best to work with spigot and the most optimized server jar for this is going to be paper which we're going to be using if you're not sure um, what i mean by that paper jar will support spigot plugins and also bucket plugins it's also really well optimized for your servers so we're gonna get the spigot that's gonna run well on that. So we're gonna go geyser spigot, we're gonna click on that, it's gonna to start to download. You probably won't see because my face unfortunately on the screen's covering it. However, it's gonna ask if you wanna keep it. We're gonna go ahead and click keep. So we've now got the geyser plugin and we're halfway to what we need. Now, next up, what you're gonna do from this page here, you're gonna to go to geyser MC. We're gonna come down to floodgate. We're then gonna to go to master and then we're gonna download the floodgate and it should be here, floodgate spigot jar. So we're gonna be downloading this one. Now you're always gonna be given the most up-to-date version. If you wanna check for older versions, just come down to your left and you can see the build history, etc. and look more into it. However, I do usually recommend the updated version. They do loads of bug fixes, the geyser team do, and uh, they always keep it pretty up-to-date. So let's just go ahead and click uh, floodgate spigots it's going to download on the top right. And again, just click the three buttons and keep if you're on Windows 10. Um, just to make sure that you actually download it. Of course, your computer wants to protect you against bad stuff, um, but this is a trusted source. Now again, if you haven't got FileZilla, I do recommend it. It's a free program. I'll leave the link in the description um, and simply go ahead and download FileZilla for 64-bit if that's your operating system. Go through the installation process um, and it really only takes a few minutes and you'll be able to move your server files over super quickly and easily. Now with everything there, we can actually get along with adding it to our server um, and get started really. So the first thing that we're gonna do first thing you should always do on your server is actually stop it before you change any files whether you're deleting or anything like that now what we're going to want to do is change the server jar here so it matches and we want the latest paper jar again don't worry if you're on bedrock you can still follow along with all of this you don't need a java account in any way you can do this completely on bedrock and i have tried myself once the server stopped what we want to do now is just delete any old files i like to do this uh, just a matter of course because then you won't get any mix-ups with your files later on uh, if one doesn't get deleted properly um, and then there's duplicate files or anything like that so first of all if you do have a world that you want to save or you want to save any other files just go ahead and do that first you can either do that through going to files and then you can go to backup uh, from backup you can then press start and then download your world one of the ways that i prefer to delete all my old files is just using filezilla because you can simply select all of them um, so to actually log into filezilla what you're going to be doing is you're going to need your ftp file access you can get this through going to files ftp file access and then using the information here to actually log into your filezilla by this i mean the ftp address will go as your host your FTP port will go into the port section you then got your FTP username which of course is your username and then your multicraft password and that will go into the password section once you filled that in just click quick connect 
you'll connect to your server, all of the files from the server will appear on the right hand side, your computer files are on the left hand side, and if you want to quick connect just use this little downwards arrow here and it will remember the information of your past servers. You've also got a few other ways of deleting your server files before we get started with this. Um, one of the ways is coming down to files, setup, um, we can then uh, choose over here, clean mod directories and plugins, and tick all server files. Pop in your password, hit apply, when you restart your server, um, it will restart it and delete all the old files. And you can simply just change it to the paper jar that you want to change it to. Third option is coming to files, FTP file access, and you can simply uh, tick all. Of course, make sure that you have done your backups first, or just copy anything that you want over. Any files on here you're able to download for your FTP file access. However, we're just going to be deleting them, so I'm just going to tick all, and I'm going to go delete. Uh, then we're going to go submit, and it's going to have deleted all of our server files. That way, when we now upload and New server jar which is going to be paper 1.17 it's all going to work nicely there's going to be no mix matches once the server starts back up it's going to load up all the correct files so as you can see we've now got a server it's stopped it's got nothing on it whatsoever and we want to come down to where it says default so from here I do recommend paper and the latest one you can of course still use spigot however paper tends to work a little bit better it's more optimized and you can use more plugins so let's just go ahead and choose paper 117.1 uh, the underneath bit will auto fill itself now what we're going to do is we're just going to simply going to hit save that's going to save and we're going to start our server back up now this is going to start our server on a 1.17.1 um, paper jar which is Java however we're now going to add the geyser and the floodgate to make it bedrock and then you can connect with either one. The reason for changing this to the paper as well was because with a default or a just a normal Java server you're not going to get your plugin section whereas with paper you can also add plugins. This does mean of course that if you're playing bedrock you can start to use plugins on your server now because you're able to control them just like a Java user would. So with our server started back up we're actually going to go ahead and stop it again because now we're going to be adding in the geyser and floodgate plugin. So we just wanted to make sure that all the files are loaded up which they are now on the correct version. So now to upload the plugins I'm going to be using FileZilla so only because these plugins are a little bit large especially with the new updates and FTP file access on Multicraft is notoriously known for not dealing very well with large files. So let's open up our FileZilla and connect to our server. Once connected, you're gonna see all your files on the right hand side. Um, of course, like we said earlier, use that doing the host, the username, password, and port to connect to your server. Then we're gonna to want to go to the plugins. So what you wanna do now is find the plugins on your computer side. I've actually moved these over to my desktop just to find them a little bit easier than on the download. So on the left hand side here, you can find where on your computer you wanna find them, the files. So I've gone to desktop and it's opened up the files within the desktop. As you can see here, we've got floodgate and we got spigot as well so I'm going to click this I'm going to select the floodgate as well and I'm going to drag and drop them over to the right hand side so essentially dragging and dropping them into our server once you're all done you're going to get transfers finished as a message we can now close down FileZilla we don't need it anymore once the plugins are uploaded go ahead start your server back up just to kick in all the files and folders um, and then really we're almost done we just need to change a few settings and you're going to be ready to connect. Now that we have it uploaded, we're going to stop it one more time. I know there's a lot of starting and stopping in this, but it's just to be done correctly. Now that we stop, we're going to come to files and we're going to go to config files. And then you're going to have to look for something that is called geyser spigot config.yml. It's usually on the first page and it starts with config.yml. Just make sure it's the actual geyser spigot one. Now, if we go ahead and click on this, this is the last bit that we actually have to edit to be able to join on with our bedrock server. At this point, what I do suggest is just right hand clicking on your internet page tab and duplicate the tab with a duplicated one just come back to your servers and um, just leave it up on the main page because you're going to need your IP and you're going to need your port and it's just much easier to copy it over if it's on the opposite page so back to the original one now yep I'm pretty blind I'm going to need some glasses for this so back to the original one now and you can see that for bedrock um, we have and this is right at the top of the guys at config.yml and we're going to want to change a few bits over so the first thing that we want to change is the port that will listen for connections uh, at the moment it's set to the default port however um, you might not be using the default port for your server of course if you are leave it however we're using the port of 25575 so we're just going to copy that over we're going to come back here highlight the number and um, then we're going to paste over it now if it does move like that just be aware that you only need one space don't leave it any more than one space no less than one space it should go port colon and then a space then the number now we're going to scroll down just a little bit more one of the next things that you can change and this is optional this is going to be the message of the day one and message of the day two this is going to be what's appearing for the bedrock client uh, when they log on to the little screen before they click onto your server if you want to change that totally up to you you can also change the one underneath it where it says geyser and i'm just going to put j dogs 
Now from here, we're gonna keep scrolling down a little bit more and what we need to look for is the IP address set to auto. Once you see this part right here, so the IP um, address of the remote Java server is gonna be set to auto, which is gonna be looking for a certain IP. However, we want it to look for our specific IP to our server. So back to the other page, and we're gonna be grabbing our IP address. Uh, we're gonna copy that over, come back over, double click on auto, right hand click and then paste over it and that, that will just paste our IP address. Again, just making sure that there is a space there. Just underneath, we're gonna be asked for our port one more time. So just make sure that this matches um, our port that we have. So we had 25575, at the moment it's on 25565. So let's just change that over to seven. Make sure that our port is matching again. Now, last but not least, and this is an important um, factor of what you gotta do, and this is why we use Floodgate as well. Not a lot of people mention Floodgate, but this stops you having to sign into a Java account or any sort of sign in, you can simply just go with your bedrock account and just log straight on to your server. So we're going to change this from online and we're going to go to Floodgate. Because we've installed the plugin, the authorization type will now be set to Floodgate so people will be able to come straight through. Apart from that, you can now go ahead and just check out all your other config.yml. Um, we don't need to do anything more. You can, of course, just change it if that's just what you like to do. And we're going to go to save. Once saved, come back to your uh, main dashboard here and we're going to start up the server because now we have pretty much everything ready. We have our geyser, we have our Floodgate, the server's running, we've changed the settings. So the next step is, once it does start, is actually logging on, just making sure that we can actually play. Short time later, we have our tick, so now let's head in game. I'm gonna say bye now because I'm gonna take my screen off and we're just gonna go straight onto the Minecraft game um, on a Bedrock server just to make sure that it's working correctly. So just loading up our Bedrock now because as I said, uh, we just wanna make sure that this actually does actually work. Of course, Java's gonna be able to join on at any point because it is a Java server. However, we wanna make sure that our Bedrock can join. So just go to play and I do believe on the servers lift I should have it down as the sky block or that's what it used to be and if you're not sure how to add the server just go ahead and name it so we're just gonna do jdog test you can then add in your IP so if we just come over here we can enter in our address or our IP of course if you have made yourself a custom domain just use that instead um, and then we're gonna enter in our pause paste that into that section so just open this back up again save or just go ahead and then play I've already added it so it's just gonna come up with a message like that of course yours will either go ahead and save or play. So we've got our server showing, uh, we've got no people on there, and we've got a good ping. So let's just go ahead and join server and just make sure that everything's working nicely. So when you do first join the world, you're gonna get that little bit that you just saw there with uh, it looks like you're falling through the sky. However, that doesn't last very long and then you're in the game. Um, one thing you can notice that I've got a dot in front of my name, so it's j, uh, dot jdog. That's going to be because I'm Bedrock Client. That's just how it sort of easier differentiates between the Bedrock and Java. However, as you can see, it's working, and not only that, it's working well. There is pretty much no lag. I've got to say they've improved this very much since the 117. Uh, 117.1 seems to have a huge amount of uh, bug fixes, and if you just check that out, there really is no lag at all, which is great. You can get along uh, with your friends. Start playing your Bedrock or Java servers together. Not only this, guys, this does mean that, in fact, you can make yourself a server like this and run it just as a Bedrock server with all the Java plugins, or pretty much all of them. We've done a test. I'll leave a link in the description or popping up now um, where I've done on my personal channel a few uh, videos on how you can add Bedrock plugins. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again on the next tutorial. Bye-bye.